next stage of diagnosing why your engine is smoking is to look at the vacuum lines that feed onto the turbo uh, boost control solenoid. Um, so the boost control solenoid is down the back of the engine next to the actuator. Uh, you can't see it from here, but where you can see it is inside the wheel arch. Uh, so, yep, yeah, just down there. So right with that blob of pink paint on it, let's just zoom in. That is the actuator. That white blob of paint is the actuating rod that goes off to the turbo. And there you can see uh, the tube, the vacuum tube that connects to the actuator, which goes onto that solenoid control valve. Uh, the top hose is the vacuum line, constant vacuum line, that comes around here. So it's this tube here. Let's just zoom out again. And you see feeds into uh, the feed from the vacuum pump, which is down here. This is a vacuum pump on the end of the camshaft. Uh, there's a T-junction that goes off to the EGR control valve. Now mine has got a EGR blanking unit on, so it doesn't actually need uh, that vacuum line. And indeed, a way to uh, test this is to take each line off in turn, and you might need to attach an extra long bit of tubing onto it. Uh, I found little bits of metal was useful to join two bits of tube together. I uh, actually cut it off from that piece of metal I found in the garage, which is one of those uh, screws, bolts uh, for connecting kitchen units together. Um, that serves as a useful, useful blanking piece as well, which I eventually put in uh, this T-junction, because that's the one to the EGR, so you no longer need that. And I did find that tube going off the EGR was a little bit leaky, so I sucked on the end with my mouth, put my tongue over the end of the tube, and then just tested how long the vacuum lasts for uh, by keep pulling on it slightly. And if the vacuum disappears, you'll notice that it's not attached to your tongue anymore. I uh, did the same on this vacuum line that goes off to the um, boost control solenoid. That seemed to be fine, even with manually engaging the solenoid, uh, which we can do by tapping into the wire to the solenoid. So uh, there's a T-junction here, remove the plastic cover, and uh, the control line is actually this brown and white wire, uh, which obviously was connected to this one. Uh, the red and white wire is uh, plus 12 volts. So when this wire is taken down to ground, down to earth, then the solenoid fully activates and you get maximum boost. So that's a way of manually controlling the boost pressure as well. Uh, what I've done for testing it is to take two wires, connect it direct to the um, solenoid, connect it onto the power supply, which I've done here, and then we can gradually ramp up um, the voltage and the current to that solenoid to see how it actually operates. We need to have the engine operating for this. So what we can do is to look at the actuator arm, that's that bit with the white paint blob on it and then gradually wind up the voltage and see how much it moves so as you gradually wind up this is 5 volts going to the solenoid and then this is 10 volts going to the solenoid and that's 12 volts fully actuated so it seems to be an analog device rather than an on off type device as you increase the current and the voltage it gradually goes down more and more. And maybe there's a slight leakage inside the solenoid, which is why it's not fully activating. So that is how to test whether it's actually uh, operating, actuating or not. But is it actuating or operating well enough? Uh, well, next we'll look at removing it from the vehicle. So we need to get underneath the vehicle, jack it up probably a little bit, or you can do it without jacking it up, depending on your ground. The boost solenoid is under here. There, there's the actuator in the middle of the screen, that one there. Uh, that's the actuator rod going off to the turbo. And that in the middle of the screen is the boost control solenoid. So it's held on just with uh, two 10 mil uh, nuts, which are fairly easy to get to to undo. Disconnect the vacuum pipes, remove the connector, and then that will come off. So here's the uh, boost control solenoid removed. Um, so these things can take apart by prising back the metal 
that keeps the, the end cap on and inside is a diaphragm so now we'll take it apart just check the condition of that to make sure the solenoid moves smoothly and if it's all okay we'll put it back together again so to get this end cap off just have to gently prise back the metal that's crimped all the way around you might want different size screwdrivers to reassemble make sure you've got a wrench or something like this uh, or some pliers because all you need to do is squash the metal back again and work all the way around and eventually you'll be able to release the cap from the end watch your fingers while you're doing this of course now you probably want some slightly different size screwdrivers for each edge start off with a small screwdriver just so you can get under the lip and then move on to a larger one so you can get a bit more leverage on it work yourself around the edge so eventually you should find one side's coming a little bit off this one needs to come a bit more there we go so there's the diaphragm inside uh, check it's all clean and what we need to do then is lift out the diaphragm and check for any deposits like this it's got a little bit of uh, rusty marks on it might be making it stick a little bit check the diaphragm for any splits this one doesn't seem too bad this can be completely pulled off the shaft I need to at this stage just check it thoroughly for uh, any holes or splits and inside here we seem to have a little filter which I think just pops out that's relatively clean I suspect this unit is relatively new actually based on the look of that I'll clean that up with a bit of uh, brake clean or something I also check the hose hole connector that goes off to your breather pipe uh, but generally that's okay and moves in and out fairly smoothly and just give that a little bit of a clean up and uh, reassemble everything so actually that's not too bad looking the other thing to check is that this little um, I guess it's some sort of valve or something inside um, goes up and down on a little spring goes up and down smoothly it looks a little bit corroded in there so you might just add a little bit of lubricant into there you want to make sure you don't get any oil on the diaphragm because oil and rubber doesn't really mix very well uh, you could use a silicon based lubricant if you're worried about getting uh, oil on your diaphragm just make sure that moves smoothly Give it a poke up and down a few times be some sort of one-way valve or something if you got any rusty marks on the shaft of your solenoid you use a bit of very fine sandpaper to rub it down probably anything over about 2,000 grade sandpaper do this is uh, 5,000 it's enough to just take off little bits of rusty stains on it like so so make sure when you've cleaned it up that that uh, rod for the solenoid moves in and out without sticking fairly smoothly Be a little bit of resistance because it forms a partial vacuum down the end which just bleeds past the side of the rod that should be nice and free refit the diaphragm on the top make sure it's straight So, check it's fitted properly. Refit your cleaned filter. Refit the solenoid. So, if you're wondering how this works, the vacuum is supplied at this end, which comes out with this little tube that normally presses against that spring loaded pad down at the bottom there and stops the vacuum going any further. Um, 
once the solenoid is activated, it doesn't matter which way around it connects, it'll pull the solenoid down, which then releases some vacuum into this uh, inner chain chamber, where it then um, acts on the diaphragm, because the other side of the diaphragm is just atmosphere. It then pulls the diaphragm back up again, and the action of that closes any more vacuum. So the stronger the solenoid pulls down, the more vacuum is allowed in and creates more vacuum in the chamber which fights against the solenoid. So it acts like uh, an analog control valve. It's not all or nothing. Depending on how strongly the solenoid is uh, pulling, you'll get more or less uh, vacuum on the output side. So next we just have to put our crimping metal ring around. Let's straighten up a little bit as well. And getting that metal ring on, it's useful to put it on the ground. Push down around the edges to make sure it's pushed all the way home. And then we just need to crimp the metal, which is easier said than done. It needs something a little bit stronger. If you do completely mess this up, then you can get second hand ones for about £20. eBay, new ones, I think, start from about 40 often about 60 So it's not much lost if you do make a complete mess. These mole grips are probably the best way of squashing it down because you can get a lot more leverage on it. So having established that it seems to be operating correctly, nothing really wrong with it. Uh, test it again once you've uh, taken it uh, apart. Uh, you can loosely just reattach everything. Just check the actuator moves at least as well as it did before and moves to its full extent. Uh, it's useful to have or put one nut on first um, because the slotted ends to this uh, boost solenoid and you can just slot one end on and that will hold it while you get the other nut and then you can put that on this is the drive to the solenoid at idle uh, zero volts is here 15 volts there so it's getting a good full drive full drive signal um, obviously not as much as being on all the time let's put it to two and a half thousand revs is around 2300 rpm also not driven very much and very little boost drive it manually you get about four pounds of psi boost auto virtually nothing turn on the turbo about four pounds it's interesting that the revs drop as you increase the turbo drive and the boost pressure Obviously, it puts more of a load on the engine. So maybe that's why they do it, to increase the economy at the expense of smoke. And that is how to check, test, uh, remove from the car, uh, dismantle, strip down, check it again, your boost control solenoid. Thanks for watching. Bye.